Yo, Elliot, I'm admittedly a bit skeptical about getting married. Not about being with one woman for the rest of my life, but more about the institution of marriage and how the court system is so heavily favored towards women and is stacked against the men in the divorce scenarios. I feel this is blocking me from truly allowing myself to be open to a deep relationship that may lead to marriage. I'm scared and in a way of the consequences if it doesn't go well. There are more than enough divorce horror stories around how to keep uh, a man cautious. I've had great relationships in the past and I know that I truly desire a high quality relationship with a higher quality woman, but I'm continually hung up on this. My last serious relationship was over six years and since that time, I've been red-pilled to this awareness. How do you recommend I overcome this fear mental block around relationships? And how do you advise me to mitigate any risk of marriage with the legal deck stacked against me? This is such a great question and it's such an important question in this degenerate age. And if you heard me speak earlier about how Satan's final battle is against the family and he's winning because families are shit these days. Families are destroyed. Families do not work, marriages do not work, and the entire culture is suffering. Our children are suffering as a result, and uh, men and women don't understand intersexual dynamics. They don't understand their roles in the home. They don't know how, men don't know how to be men. Women don't know how to be women. And to add to that mess, we also have feminism, which is institutionalized uh, sexism, against men. Don't ever be fooled into think that feminism is about equality because it's not. If it was about equality, then when they, when there was divorce courts, in the divorce courts, there would be equal outcome, but there's not. 90% of the courts lean towards women, right? Uh, men lose every single time. Very rarely do men win in divorce courts. They don't win their children. They don't win the financial battle. They always, always lose. And that in and of itself is also uh, and, and probably the final nail in the coffin against the family. The family has been perverted for a very, very, very long time. And we're at the we're, we're at the pinnacle of that. Institutionally, it has been destroyed. Socially, it has been destroyed. Individually, it's been destroyed. Gender relations have been destroyed. We are living in end times and it sucks. It fucking sucks because... That's my battle. That's my fight. And that's what I want to see be healed in our world. And I'm, and I'm not going to stop until it's done. This is my calling. And I say that I'm here to make men strong again, and I am. But I'm here to make men strong again because that's what will bring back strong families. That will make good families. Um, but at the same time, what do you do in this instant? So I wish I could speak from an idealistic place. I have, to, I, I have to preface what I'm going to say with the fact that I am fortunate. I know that I'm fortunate. I realize the fortune, the luck, the grace in my life. I made some decisions that turned out to be good decisions, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But my wife and I have an amazing marriage. We've been together for going on 30 years. It's crazy. I think about it sometimes and I'm like, I scratch my head. I'm like, how the fuck did this happen? I'm a knucklehead, right? Neither of us are perfect people. How did this happen? Um, I think God allowed the graces in my life such that I would be a, 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 a beacon for those who are lost in this dark world as it relates to family. I come from a strong family, which is rare, and I'm building a strong family, a strong marriage, which is rare. So I hope, I hope to stand as a, an example of hope or to give hope. But at the same time, I can't give idealistic advice like do what I did. I can explain what I did and I can tell you why what I did was good, but the odds are stacked against you. And then odds were stacked against me too. But like I said, I'm lucky. Um, ideally, for men and women, it is better to get married early, start making babies early, right? In your early 20s, don't, don't slap dick and jerk off your whole fucking early 20s. This is what they want us to do. They want women riding the cock carousel. They want men jerking off the porn. And that is a waste of human vitality, human dignity and strength. It sucks, it's terrible. Um, but it's so enticing, right? Women, when they realize that their power is in their pussy, all they gotta do is open up their legs and they can have anything they want. Men realize, hey, I don't have to deal with these ornery, 
what would you say, like, uh, at bad attitude women, and I can just jerk off to porn. And it's getting even even more easy to eliminate a relationship because because they got the sex robots now. And I don't, you know, I, I think it's pathetic, but I can't blame. When I see guys that are like, no, nah, I'm not dealing with women. I'm just going to get me a sex robot. Like, a part of me, most of me is like, that is retarded. But a part of me is like... <sighs> I kind of get it. I kind of get it, right? Like, why deal with this? And, and I hear horror stories as well, right? Because I deal with you guys, and I watch the videos, and I read the books, and I, I'm in the space, right? I speak at the 21 convention every year for the past three years. I'm in the space, so I know what's going on. I don't want to be ignorant. That's why I dived into this. I can't be ignorant to what's going on with regard to relationships and the men that I lead. So I'm not going to give you idealistic I, I, uh, advice, Although I would love to. I would love to see all of you happily married very early, making children, making money, building a family, having a home, and living a great life. To me, that traditional life is the real life. Everything, everything outside the bounds of that is, a, is fugazi, is fake, it's made up, and it's degenerate degenerate. I like that word degenerate, right? I like that word degenerate because it's the opposite of generate. And to be a strong father, to be a man, to be a family man and a provider is to be generative. Did you know that? Degenerate comes from the opposite of the word generative. To generate, to generate generations, right? You create generations. So the opposite of generation is backwards, degenerate, to take away from life. We live in a world that takes away from life. When you have 60 million plus abortions over the past 30 years, you know that you're living in a culture that is focused on death. We live in a death culture. We don't live in a, life, in a culture that, that breeds life, that loves life, right? And we're ruled by uh, satanic forces that have manipulated us into believing that all these things are good. But we're going to go back. When the shit hits the fan and we have to live normal, natural lives once again, we will go back to tradition. But until then, what do you do? you got to play their game. And their game is not fair. Let me, let me, let me, before I go into strategy about what I would do, I just want to say, I get, maybe I'm beating a dead horse, but I do want to say that I believe that most men want wives, right? Men want wives. Men want long-term, happy, healthy, come home to my wife relationships. Most men that I speak to, that's what they want. They want a nice wife. They want a nice life. They don't want to be out there poking and prodding uh, and, and riding the cock carousel, right? What's the opposite of cock carousel for men? I don't think it's good for men to be promiscuous. They really don't. There's so many downsides to it, but this is not the video for it. You've heard me talk about it before. It's better to be monogamous, right? They say that it's not natural to be monogamous, but that comes from the same Marxist mindset that gives us, oh, it's not natural to tell your children if they have a penis, they're a boy and a girl, if she has a vagina. They want to change everything in nature, everything, everything that is good and righteous and upright, they want to destroy. And they're doing it. And by telling men that you need to ha go have lots of sex with lots of women, uh, that's degenerate, right? Especially the sterile transient sex. I got that one from E. Michael Jones. He calls it, we live in a culture of sterile, transient sex. And I was like, and he says that that is the forerunner to homosexuality. He says, when a culture embraces sterile, transient sex, they're one step away from gay marriage. And he was right. <laughs> he was so right. All right? This is what we got. 1960s, sterile, transient sex. 19, uh, 2014, gay marriage. And then what do we have now? Trans kids, right? So it was a slippery slope. The minute a culture opens itself up to sex entertainment, it, 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 it just is a slippery slope to trans, transgender kids. So here we are, right? And we have to blame ourselves. This is what contraception does. This is what uh, hookup culture and abortion does. This is what feminism does, right? So we're here. What do we do? If we want to restore this thing, but we also want to, I understand, like you, you, you have to protect yourself in a way, right? If you want to protect yourself in a way, the best thing to do is to play their game. And by playing their game, I mean you got to sign contracts, business contracts with a woman, right? Not state marriage license, 
right? Talk to somebody that understands what I'm telling you about right now. I had a friend that did this. And I, at first, you know, I was like, that's weird. And I kind of like denigrated him a little bit because I didn't know. But now that I know, I look at him I'm like, damn, that's smart. He didn't get married, but he has his wife. He didn't get, in other words, it wasn't ma marriage in the st with the state, right? Because that's really what perverts the marriage is that it becomes a state institution. Why is my marriage subject to the state institution? Well, I'll tell you why. If you have a social security number, you don't even own yourself. So not only do you not own yourself, you don't own your commitments and you don't own your children. If you go give your children social security numbers, they belong to the state. They belong to the IRS. Every single one of us with a social security number and our name in all caps belongs to the IRS because we are batteries. We are tax batteries for the system, which is all crumbling right now. Reason why they want depopulation. That's a different story. So what you got to do is maybe have a, this is, if I think about it, I'm just putting myself in your shoes. If I think about it and what I would do if I was in your shoes today, I would have a beautiful ceremony in my backyard. I'll go, I will find a nice place, whatever. It doesn't have to be a backyard, but whatever. Have a beautiful ceremony, a religious ceremony, if you will, depending on your religion, you know, bring in the priest or whatever, right? Have a beautiful cer a ceremony, but do not go get a state marriage license. Instead, hire a lawyer and write out a contract, right? This is like a business contract. You're like my business partner, right? And what do contracts have? <clears throat> they have rules, they have boundaries, they have stipulations. This is how, if this, then that. If this, then that, right? And so that way, if there is a divorce, which God forbid there be divorce, I hate divorce, I hate divorce, I hate when I see families destroyed by divorce, I hate it so much, it hurts my heart. <clears throat> Because we don't recover from divorces. Families don't recover from divorces, meaning that family doesn't recover from divorces, but then generations down the line. Children that come from divorced families generally don't have healthy relationships afterwards. And I'm not knocking those children because it's not their fault, but they just don't know what to do. So when you see a divorced family, you could just basically chalk up their next five, ten generations to more degeneracy. They just don't know what to do. I hate divorce. But if, the, if it comes down to it, and there's a quote unquote divorce. Really, there is no divorce. There's just, you're just breaking, you're just fulfilling the contract. You're breaking the business, business contract. You then go to the lawyer and you look at the contract and it's like, okay, well, we already decided what we're going to do at the end of this. <coughs> if we have children, we already know the children are going to be here or there or, right? If there's money, we already know that money is going to go to this guy, the money is going to go to that guy, <coughs> right? Or to, the, or to her or to him, whatever it is. Whatever it is, and, and here's the thing too, man. Even like, you know, I've, I've signed many business contracts in my life. You got to be legit honest with yourself about your nature, the nature of the person that you're getting involved with, and the potential situations that may arise in the future. Don't, the, I would say, <clears throat> I know this doesn't make any sense, but you'll, know, you'll understand my sentiment. Um, don't, don't create that contract when you're in love. Don't create that contract with love glasses on. In fact, if you hire a lawyer that is like, you know, he's a third party, he's just not, he's not dealing with it. Um, you know, he's just being objective. That's the kind of person you want to have associated with it. <clears throat> so you're really not getting married, but you are, it's a, it's a, it's a religious ceremony. It's a, a it's a, it's a heart to heart soul connection ceremony, but then keep the state out of it. Now, Ray asked a really good question. He says, what about tax benefits? Don't get tax benefits. You don't get tax benefits, but that's okay. I would rather not play their game to get their bonuses. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like tax benefits, tax benefits are the work. Even the term fucking tax benefit pisses me off because taxation is theft. All tax benefit really is, is, hey, I'm going to give you back a little bit of your money because you're doing something I like you doing. Fuck your tax benefits. Fuck your tax benefits. I'll tell you that straight up. Anything, anything with a government trying to help me with some, by giving me back my money, they could take it and shove it. That's right, Ray. F tax benefits. <coughs> and I think it's better for you to be in control of your situation. 
by creating that contract and holding yourselves legally bound to it in that way than the state marriage license. And so if they say no tax benefit, say screw your tax benefit. I don't want the government involved in my life. I don't want any benefits from the government. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want it if they're giving it. All this stimulus money, look man, you know what it is? It's manipulation. We, they're not giving us anything. They're basically, they're, they're letting us have back most of what they've stolen. <clears throat> I don't trust the government. I don't want anything from them. I, want, I would rather them just leave me alone. How about don't take my tax money? Because I know what you're doing with it. They're taking my tax money and they're doing all kinds of degenerate things. From killing babies in America to dropping bombs on black kids in Africa. They're doing all kinds of dumb shit with my money. Syria. Afghanistan. Iraq. Right? What are we doing in those countries anyway? So I'd rather you just keep, let me keep my money and then give me no, any goddamn benefits. Right? I don't want your stimulus. I don't want your benefits. I, want, I don't want your in, in, in being involved in my family. So that's what I would do, man. If I was in your shoes and I found that high-quality woman, I wouldn't stop myself from getting deep into a relationship with her because I want a family. I want children, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird, right? Maybe I'm old school, traditional E, but I want a big family. I got four kids, right? I would have eight. I would have 12. I tell my wife, jokingly, I tell my wife that maybe that's why I should have multiple wives, right? Maybe that's why I have multiple wives because one wife can't bear all those children, but I would like to have lots and lots of children. I want to have lots of children. I want to have lot. I want a. I want a big family. This love, man. This what's more love than a than a family? Your friends will never love you the way your family will love you. Your work coworkers will never love you. Nobody will love you. Nobody will ever love you the way your family will love you. And it's a special kind of love. It's not mommy daddy love. Sure, your mom and daddy will love you because you know they made you. But when a man and a woman come together, that's a choice love. That's a choice. To love one another. And love is not what the world has been telling us it is. It's not emotional at all. Love is not an emotion, right? That's what Disney and the pop culture music has been telling us to keep us confused. Oh, I fell out of love because I had no more feelings or, I, or my feelings aren't stimulated or my emotions aren't bubbling up and coming up through my fucking throat. So I'm not in love anymore. Love has nothing to do with emotion. Love has to do with selfless sacrifice and sharing your life with another person that means till death do you part that means this is this is it we're doing it you and me right i think most people's business partnerships work better because you go into a business partnership with that mindset you know you go into a business partner with a mindset that we're going to make this profitable we're going to make this profitable and then we're going to cash out at the end that's what a marriage is we're going to make this profitable and when I say cash out at the end, that means we're going to make it so that you get to heaven and so do I. We're working on each other's salvation. That's what we're doing. That's what marriage really is. I hold your heart, you hold mine, and I'll make sure you go the right way and you help me do the right thing. Right? Even if you make me upset, even if I don't have gushy, lovey-dovey, Disney-fied feelings for you every day, no, you're my wife. You're my woman. You're the mother of my children. There's nothing else I want out there. So that's it to me, man. That's just the way it is for me, man. I don't want nothing out there. I want my wife. I want my children. And that's it. The government can shove it. They can take their tax benefits. But once again, man, I'm lucky. I, I, and I, I have to say that. I have to acknowledge that. Because even these women out there right now, they looking. I understand just from hearing from you guys and from and, and watching videos and stuff, these women are predatory, predatory, predators. These women are predators out there, especially if you're a high value man and you're trying to bring her into your life. All they see is how can I rape this guy? That's what they want. We should have me too for men, right? There should be a me too for men. Look at look, look, me too. Look what happened to this, this woman, how she divorced me, how she left me, took everything I own, even though she's the one that cheated on me. I see it all the time. So I get it. I understand. And I wish I could be idealistic. I wish, you know, I like, <clears throat> I like religion. I like the religious ceremony. I like the religious way of living life and tradition. Um, 
but we so far gone from that that I can't, I can't with good conscience say, hey, just find yourself a good Catholic girl, right? Because even a good Catholic girl can easily, easily, look what happened to Eve, easily be led astray by Satan. By Satan. So that's it, man. That's my opinion on that. Um, play the game the way the game is played, and that's your best bet, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.